Alrighty then, hopefully you found all the sections up until now very helpful and informative. While it may seem rather basic, our projection model is merely taking each of those building blocks that we learned and putting them together in a unique way. We have finally made it to the point in the course where we are going to get our hands dirty with the MBA season stats data for our model. At a later date, I will share a blog post that highlights how I acquired all of this data. Hint, it comes from the stats.mba.com API. But for now, let's use my already created CSV files. Let's read in our MBA data CSVs that we will use and then clean it up so we don't run into any issues down the road when running our functions. First things first, let's import all of our modules. Notice the alias I am using for each. This is extremely common across all the Stack Overflow questions you'll come across. The one new module you may not have seen before is matplotlib. This is a common module, along with Seaborn, for plotting graphs and charts in Jupyter Notebooks. We also made a special callout to ensure our charts print directly in their notebooks. In Fantasy Basketball, there are typically 14 stack columns that are used for scoring in the daily weekly matchup. These include points, minutes, field goals made, field goals attempted, three-point field goals made, three-point field goals attempted, free throws made, free throws attempted, offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, assists, steals, turnovers, and blocks. Now, there are two types of leagues, head-to-head -head and rotisserie. From my experience, each of the stat columns count evenly for overall points. That means for now we will not treat any of them specially since they count the same towards our overall points. Let's now read in our player stats. We are going to use per game stats for our model since it accounts for injuries more so than the season totals. Games played will still be a feature we try and predict as well as use it for finding similar player seasons. Now if you remember how to read in our CSV files, we use the read CSV method calling it directly on PD. And just as a reminder, I'm gonna tell it that the first row in the document should be used as the headers, and we'll save this into a data frame. Notice two things here. First is that I used the relative path to the file since it's stored in another folder. Second, I added a header argument. I am just reassuring pandas that the first row is going to be the column names. I would still get the same output if I didn't explicitly say this, but I view it as a best practice. Now that we have our data in our data frame, let's explore it some. What do the first 10 rows look like? We can do this calling the head method, df head, and we'll see the first 10 rows in the data frame, which appear to be grouped by the season ID. Uh, there's 10 rows with 21 columns. What do the last 10 rows look like? I'd expect it to be very similar, which it is, but look at the season ID seems to be the 2018-19 season. We can also take a sample just to make sure we have multiple season IDs. It looks like we do. Great, seems pretty straightforward. Let's also take time to look at all of our column names from the CSV. We can do this using list and passing in the data frame. So notice how we have all of the stats columns we care about, but we also have a minutes column, an age column, a games played column, and then our season ID and player ID. That's a lot of column names, and it's too many for pandas to show in one window, which is why we see that dot 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 to signify that there are more columns. We are going to use all these columns as features for our model, so let's roll with it. When building our model, we want to make sure the data we give it is clean. To do this, let's go through the data frame and drop rows that have missing values. Right now, I care about rows where all of the values are missing. To drop all of these rows, let's call our drop nom method and save it into a new data frame. So if you recall, we can take our data frame Call the drop nom method on it and then tell it how we want to drop it which is saying only if all of the rows are blank rather than any and let's save this into a new data frame called df cleaned next i'm going to want to get rid of some outliers what i mean by outliers are rows of player data that may skew our calculations when looking at season and league averages 
I am only going to drop outliers in the low end since I don't want to discard the upper echelon of NBA players, considering they are going to be the most sought after in NBA fantasy drafts. Let's hone in on the games played column and get more info about it. To do it, I'll select the column with the square brackets and then call the describe method on it. So here we can take the data frame, we will look at the games played column, and let's describe it. There are 82 games in a season. What I'm curious to see is what's the standard deviation for games played. I want to see how many players played more than three standard deviations away from the mean, but on the low end. Two reasons players may have played this few of games is injury or potentially just lack of talent and the coach didn't want to play them. I don't care what the reason is, but I want to drop these players so they don't weigh down the model. So the mean of games played is 52 and the standard deviation is 25. I can calculate the minimum number of games played to make it into our model. To do this, let's go ahead and take our games played and we'll take the mean of that and let's subtract it from the games played standard deviation and multiply that by three and we'll save this as a variable min games played and we can print that Looks like our outliers are too far away since it returns a negative number. So instead, let's try a different approach. We can refer back to the data we described and look at the percentiles provided. It looks at about 75% of the players played more than 33 games. That number is still a little high, so let's approach this one last way and look at a graph of our games played data to see if we can spot a good cutoff point. We'll graph this with the histogram, and to do that, we are going to give the bin values, call numpy a range on it, and we want this to start at zero, stop at 82, since there's 82 games in a season, and we can take a step uh, by two to save some space. And basically to graph this, we will take our games played column again. We want a histogram. And within that histogram, the bins are gonna be the bin values that we just wrote. And our fig size will be 40, 14 by six is generally a good way to see things. So if we run this, this is a histogram of our games played in our data frame. And what's interesting here is I feel like it starts to kind of drop around 10 and then that's when it looks to get a little bit more normal. So I think we can use 10 as our minimum games played filter. Now let's filter our data frame to only keep the rows where the games played is greater than the minimum games played. So we'll update this variable. Again, if we just set it equal to 10, it will update. And then let's call our DF filter data frame where we're taking the DF cleaned. and saying we want where the games played is greater than our minimum GP. We can run that. And if we want to check how many players were dropped, we can say, let's get the count of our player ID column in our original one. And let's get the count of our player ID column in our filter data frame. We'll set this equal to X, second one equal to Y, and then we can print X minus Y. So it looks like we dropped about 971 rows. Great, next we'll look at normalizing data across seasons.